<laughs> you guys, you guys ready to do this? I'm just, we're just going to kind of like, it'll sure. just be a very oh. casual conversation. I do have some like questions, but it can kind of develop and go wherever it wants to go. But it's really just about puppets that you wear. It's sure. just, it's not about, so we're, so this whole thing about earthquakes, you're not going to use any of that? No, we're it not going to use be, any of it. Who sorry, knows? Boys. Maybe, maybe it'll be the little tease. Maybe, uh, I don't know. <laughs> If you want to be in the know about how we put together our little show If you'd like to hear the puppeteers and play the characters that you cheer So join us as we go, 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 go Welcome, welcome to Below the Frame. I am Matt Vogel. We uh, have been talking for the past two episodes about puppets that you wear. Puppets like Big Bird, puppets like Mr. Snuffleupagus, puppets like Bear in the Big Blue House. And we are continuing to talk with Noel McNeil and Martin P. Robinson about those things right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are some different or interesting places that you performed your character that were outside of like for Snuffy and Big Bird, outside of Sesame Street or for Bear? outside of the blue house where are some places that you have Noel? where have you taken bear because i know he's been to some places he's been he's been to the uk a couple of to london a couple of times which has been great yeah. uh um and then in um the u.s um he's been to like um uh like to the disney world because um got invited to do the the christmas parade for like three wow. years and uh, also like uh, appearing in California uh, for the um, for, for the uh, Hollywood Christmas Parade, which is always the oh, day right. after Thanksgiving. Yes. Occasionally on Hollywood Squares, which oh, was that's fun. Cool. And Bear was the was the first and only Muppet to walk out and take his seat because everybody else had to be preset. Yep. Like if it was Kermit or Elmo Oscar. or even Big yeah. Bird or Oscar, they were preset. But Bear wow. could actually walk out. And I would walk in and like sit down at the square. So that That's was impressive. That was cool. And also being on a show like Hollywood Squares, you could just be a little, you could be a little more cheeky. Yeah, with, uh, you could. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And um, they would give me the questions. And so I would like come up with my, my jokes. So like the first part of the, sh the game, like you can make jokes. And the second part, they kind of like, like, you know, if you know it, say the answer. If you don't, don't. But they encourage you to bluff. So, which was really fun. And then they asked me, because they had this thing um, where a contestant could then ask a celebrity to come down and help them with this grand prize. And they asked me, could Bear, like, actually come down and help the contestant? I'm like, sure. So they must have pre-asked him, because the guy asked, like, Bear in the Big Blue House. And it was just, like, thrilled. So I got to stand beside him and, like, help encourage, like, the answers. But whenever I did appearances, I would always insist that it include a children's hospital. So that bear could actually go to a children's hospital, and uh, I got to go to the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. Uh, got to go to this great facility in Florida called Give Kids the World, mm -hmm. which is this whole resort that was created for uh, kids, uh, critically ill kids, and they would have what's called rush wishes, so that mm -hmm. depending upon um, the condition of the kid, they could just literally in 24 hours just like have the kid and the family down there the rooms are big enough to facilitate any kind of medical equipment like car rentals free park tickets are free oh meals are free like it's it's all there and so i was doing um the christmas uh parade but i wanted to go there and so i went and i had this little 20 minute show i would do with bear and there was this one little girl afterwards and i would bear was talking with her and it turns out her wish was to meet Bear at the Disney MGM Studios because the show was still going on at the time. It was just by sheer coincidence that she got to meet me and Bear first before going to the studios for the plan meeting. And so to cover my tracks, Bear said, well, you know, I can't wait to see you later. But, you know, after that show, I'm going to be kind of tired and I need to save my voice for the <laughs> next show. So I won't be saying anything, but I'll still be able to say hi That's to great. you and give you That's hugs. Great. So, so. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool that you got to do that. It's really nice. Yeah. How about you, uh, oh. Noel brings up an, an interesting point with the, with the walk-arounds yeah. is that how self-contained they are. Um, they're the only, you know, being a 
you know, a, a, a climb inside puppet platform, uh, there's no wires. Uh, there's no puppeteer in evidence. There's nothing but the character. Uh, so mm -hmm. when Birdie and Bear and Snuff walk out and, and see kids, it's just there's there's no there's no sweaty puppeteers yeah. to subtract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say like one of the best times outside of the Big Blue House was when um, back um, during the six month anniversary of nine eleven, um, there was a, it was we are family for kids. Yeah. And there was the video where different characters would go to each other's yeah. shows. So since we're in the same building, Bear got to go downstairs to be on Sesame Street uh, to sing that portion. Yeah. And and Bear was no Bear's a big character until you stand next to Big Bird and Snuffy, and suddenly he's the size of a like radar. <laughs> oh. He's like a hey bear. <laughs> he's <a> behemoth. <laughs> I remember Marty Snuffy kept like trying to hug Bear and like he's like, ooh, Bear. Was, like, <laughs> and Bear was like, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> You can't you yeah. can't you can't deny no, Snuffy no, his hugs. He just uh, no, he really you can't. can't. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he just Isn't he'll just lean <laughs> lean right into you. <laughs> lean right lean in and in. like wrap it around you, and you just gotta uh, go with it. <laughs> Marty, have you yeah. ever? Uh, I know there are a couple places where Snuffy has been that have been outside of Sesame Street. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I love it when we do uh, when we you know do on location stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I've been I've been promoting that for you know. I just love it so much. We 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 did we did three Snuffleupaguses in Central Park. Were you there then, Noel? Or uh, um, we did Snuff and I'm Mama Snuff sure. and Baby Alice. All three of us. I, I got, think it was. Yeah, I've got these yeah. wonderful. There's there's wonderful photos of of us waiting at at the stoplight, the crosswalk at Central Park West. And when we got the crosswalk, we walked oh, man. Snuff, yeah. and then the cameras rolling, but you know, and the cars were just there watching three snufflepaguses attached, uh, uh, um, you know, snuffle. Oh, oh yeah. Like tails. Like, tail. Yeah. Like That's elephants. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> crossing, crossing at the crosswalk. And, uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, a thing to behold. I just love, uh, you know, kind of showing up and busking like that. We did yeah. that. We were down in Soho shooting something. It was Whoa, there, I don't yeah. remember. We were shooting. Something. I think it was Elmo Palooza, and you were in that. We park. did do that. We did right. Elmo Palooza. It, that was yeah. pretty cool. But, but that was you were in. You were in it then, not me. I couldn't do that shoot. <laughs> oh, that was, um, that was you, Noel. I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was. You got three. You got three guys who have very little memory, people. So you know, it's like. Write in the comments who was doing this. You know, <laughs> uh, there was a Chrysler Pacifica commercial, Marty. That That's was in was, Soho, yeah. and it you literally stopped traffic. It was the coolest yeah. thing. And again, like when you see people pull out their phones on Sesame Street when Snuffy's coming, you're in the middle of New York City where nobody really gives a care about anybody crossing the street. <laughs> yeah. Well, when Snuffy comes out everybody's like yeah. stopping and waving and it was the coolest thing it was so cool to see yeah i think the coolest uh, with snuffy was him finally being in the thanksgiving day parade yes for the, in 2019 for the 50th yeah. anniversary and having him there and yeah. just like which was and people were the same thing people were just going nuts yeah. so it's like oh my god it's snuffy yeah. <laughs> I, 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 i'd been kind of wanting to wanting to do something in the parade live with him for years i you know to, to get him onto the float or uh or yeah to, you know walking behind the float maybe not all those blocks but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait i forget did you wait, walk wait, did behind what did you do i can't re oh we were, were we were we were preset we were preset at the show oh place, right right yes know, okay little, again yes and right. the uh the, the the float showed up and then we were we had this choreographed thing with all these hundreds of kids that we uh That's yeah right. that we did beautiful. of course of course uh, you know I, I went out there and, and as soon as i got into place my monitor died <laughs> so uh that was <sighs> not fun can't <laughs> and then we, the only way to see yeah we did like... we did the thing years ago where snuffy was part of the marathon this is before he was uh, a mainstream character oh yeah uh, where we ran I across the Arizona bridge yeah. what yeah that whole like that shot oh, oh yes there's this whole shot where it's like you see the bridge and it's kind of like there's this curve and you see like coming over the curve is like That's snuffy so, cool. so you had to like preset snuffy and then run <laughs> all the way back to the camera that's cool and just like and just like, 
I think I think maybe you had a walkie-talkie inside so they could say action and you would then know when to like go or yeah that sounds that sounds plausible yeah, yeah. but, but well, had I to had be... the walkie-talkie and I could say go and you would just wow. go yeah. but we had but we had to be like 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 Noel says it, below the curve so they couldn't see us right. so the entire shot was us coming you know rising above the curve uh you know kidding it and then, and then passing the camera That's that was a cool. long run that is and we had yeah. those, those big dumb uh tennis shoes on which were you oh. know which really oh yeah made it a lot harder that was uh yeah that was uh that was a, a hard this, thing to do this is the second uh, mention my, of my, things that are like heavy like you know a big sombrero <laughs> large shoes anytime you put anything on one of these puppets that you wear it really it it can hinder you. They're they're always heavy because the puppet's a little heavy anyway. But add anything right. to it: a costume, pajamas, a, a, right. a skating helmet, or you know, whatever it is. It just it just it yeah. throws everything off. Oh yeah, there's a straw hat that oh. Snuffy had to wear for this vaudeville bit back in the '80s, and it was just like, and it's like it was. I think they literally used automotive glue to keep it together. It's like, why would you do this? It's like, why? Why is this so heavy? It's supposed to be a straw hat. After, and we're just putting it on you. And there's kind of this moment of like, ugh. <laughs> it's like this uh, weight hitting stuff on the top uh, and like painting it together to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, we, I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, I kind of watchdog anything that's going to go on his uh, head. Uh, yeah, and then you know, and Jason and his crew there are so so conscious of uh, of of weight and where it mm -hmm. goes, you know, and it's it's you know, it's you know, getting getting you know, getting the balance just right is is sometimes really the key. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's ridiculous. I remember with with Bird outside of Sesame was when he did the road yeah, tour the across America. And he was going across. Yeah. Across America, and you got to take Bird back to your hometown. I did. Yeah. I had him in Kansas City, uh, and I couldn't make all the dates. So thankfully, Mr. McNeil was there. You went to, but you went to like Chicago and uh, San Francisco. Yeah, or, 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 or it was no, Seattle. I went to, I went to Chicago, uh, Dallas, um, uh, Denver, Denver to like that really cool theater. Uh, cool. And then the last stop being, and then uh, we Los both Angeles. were in Los Angeles, and you were you were Abelardo. Abelardo. Yeah, which was pretty cool. Yes. That was so much fun. By the Hollywood sign. You and got then, in Abelardo? I got in yeah, Abelardo. We did like a yes. dance or something Excellent. on the beach. It was so much yeah, on fun. The beach. <laughs> it was so cool. Uh, yeah, I've gotten to take Big Bird to some real, I mean, not half as many cool places as Carol got to travel with him. But I did get to go to the UK. We did, uh, Big Bird was on the um, uh, the Furchester Hotel for a couple of episodes. Yeah, All right. we've done yeah. the uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, Fourth of July celebration out on the Capitol grounds. Um, uh, did, I did lip sync battle of against Jason Schwartzman and I won or Big Bird won. It was really cool. <laughs> Big Bird won uh, against Jason Schwartzman, um, which was really cool. It's a really it's one of my favorite things. And I got the belt they give you. It's like a wrestling belt. And, oh, and yeah. I got to keep the belt. So I've got that belt hanging in my office. And it's like this huge wow. <laughs> wrestling belt that says lip sync battle champion, Big Bird. It's really cool. Um, I, I did get I to go to Washington. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a picture. I did get to go to Washington, D.C. Yeah. to do something with the first lady, Michelle Obama. It was not at the White House. It was not any place fancy. It was at a supermarket with Billy Eichner for a Billy on the street. <laughs> that super part. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I got to do something really cool with, with her, with Billy Eichner for a Billy on the street. And that was, that was super fun. But I mean, we get to do such cool things with these characters and get to go to such amazing places when we don't have yeah. the great privilege and honor of being on Sesame street or in a big blue house or wherever we might happen to be doing these characters. I, I I'm, I'm, I have no doubt. I'm gonna. I was gonna say. I'm so grateful that I get to do what I do, and I have no doubt that you both feel the same. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's like I, I remind myself on a daily basis. It's like, do not complain, like Neil. <laughs> I know, it's I like, know. You have nothing yeah. to complain about. I know. It's like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and now it's yeah. been so great, uh, Noel, to see you directing on Sesame Street, part of the directing team now, yeah. which is awesome. 
I got to direct. My first time I was directing was when you asked, like, it's like, are you still in the DGA? It's like, and for for the Chicago yeah. uh, Sesame Big Bird bits, and like, it's like, mind directing that? It's like, and sure. You'll right. be in Big Bird <laughs> and like, direct there. yourself. Is that okay? And you're like, yeah, why not? Sure, I'll do it. We're yeah, used to yeah, multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's really fun, like directing, because then because I know like what everything is entailed, yeah. like puppeteering wise, wrangling wise, and being on Sesame, like. And all the like, like knowing like how you should direct, and also occasionally how you should not direct. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we've had uh, that yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but always think, but like with Sesame, especially, always think like, you know, what would John do? What would Lisa do? And just like go yeah. from there. And just like, yeah. So it's like it's been really, it's been really fun, and got an Emmy award yeah. for. It. Got an Emmy award. That's awesome. <laughs> you're you're, you're uh, both and, you're both. Yeah. So good at directing uh, Sesame. I, I am so grateful when you when you guys show up because I, I know okay, you know we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be taking care. We got you know somebody who really knows uh, knows the ropes and uh, hmm. and uh, you know can can see the the big picture. Yeah, thank you. It's yeah, and this is really something special about directing like Sesame Street because for me, starting off as the Wrangler and then background puppeteer, and now I'm like a director for the yeah. show it's like this is really this is really special yeah, that's the way it's supposed really to work yeah. I, I have nothing to complain no. about <laughs> not a thing no, no. not a thing uh I, before we wrap up here i do want to ask you um you know the question what is the most oft heard question um about your puppet that you wear that people ask you that maybe aren't puppeteers i have one in my head that i that uh, that i'm thinking of um, that is the most often asked question. So I'll, 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 I'll bet if we both, uh, if, if the three of us uh, think about it for a moment, yeah. it'll, it'll be the same one. <laughs> I think it is too. Yeah. Uh, so maybe on the count of yeah. three, let's just see, let's say it. I really hope it's the same thing. It'd be so cool. <laughs> okay. So on the count of three, we're going to say it. one, two, three. Is it hot? Do you do the oh! voice while you're inside? <laughs> <laughs> do you do the voice? That's, that's, that's the second. Like how, how hot, hot is, is it? In, I get. Is it hot in there? I uh, always yeah. get. Is it hot yeah. in there? Uh, is it yeah. hot and in And then, there? do you do the voice? Or who does the voice? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the voice. Like you do the voice too. Yes, it's like yes, do. I do the voice too at the same time. Yeah. yeah. One time I did put a thermometer inside bear oh. in the back, and it would get up, and it got up to uh, about something like. Uh, 90 Ooh. degrees because I was doing a dance. So, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and I was I was on on the set. I was on the set of Bear. I don't know if I was just busy. I don't think I was working. But I have never been on a colder uh, set in my life. Mm -hmm. where, where the, where the, camera, the cameraman all had down jackets on. Uh, you know, uh, yes. Uh, you know, Pat. Pat Manetta, it was just uh -huh. all bundled up. Yes, in his little hood. <laughs> just like, oh yeah, was, they cranked up for that first season. They would just crank up the AC. So the the first season wrap gift were fleece uh -huh. jackets with the logo on it, so which was really nice. And also, now you don't have to complain because next season is going to be just as cold. Wear your fleece jacket <laughs> inside <Yeah>. the studio. <laughs> but they, they kept that studio frigid, basically, so that it would be uh, you know workable inside the costume for you. Yeah, and just like yeah, there would be it would be so cold, and yet sometimes people would like come up to me like and like they could just put my their hand on Bear's back, and you just feel like the heat radiating. That was the other thing, though, how well designed he was, because the fur it wasn't solid piece of fur; it was actually what they called amoebas, like puzzle pieces yeah. that was sewn on the helix. So this way, it would allow heat to uh -huh. like escape. And all it that. also gave it and great movement too, right? I mean, didn't that help with the movement? Yeah, it was and... like he was, he's such a, he was oh, such a beautifully beautiful. designed character, character, and had the I had these like I call them like the salad bowls, like on each side of my legs, so he could like his thighs kind of like rounded yeah. and like no matter where like it, uh, I turned, mm -hmm. it would keep his shape. So he, yeah, so that's why he was able to like move and be as fluid. I remember um, um, there's a great uh, company in Australia called Earth, and I remember the the owner of it was bringing like dinosaurs to the U.S. and he was asking me about um, Bear, like what kind of mechanism was inside, like or, like the hydraulics inside Bear's neck, and I was like, 
really? <laughs> like, it, you think it's mechanical? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. seriously, how did it work? He had no concept because that's how he went. It was like, I was always, and I just like put my arm up. He was like, was like seriously? It's like, yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's my arm. <laughs> I, I had a, I had a, uh, uh, sorry, I, 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 yeah. piggybacking on that exact story. My, my uncle was an astrophysicist, uh, worked for NASA and uh and you know very heavy thinker and he came to see the the early production of little shop of horrors with his uh like three-year-old son and uh and afterwards he came back to me and said oh you know what you know how many axes of uh, of of you know hydraulics did you have in there to to do that the whole you know you know it was, must have been uh, the, and his son you know tugged on his arm and said no dad it was just it was a puppet it was you know he, he was just inside <laughs> working <laughs> that was one of those things that you know that yeah. yeah, you think too much, and you think, okay, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't overthink it. it. Don't overthink <laughs> um, it. No. Noel, inside bear. Did you ever have feelings of like just it was lonely in there? <laughs> Actually, it was like for me, it was the opposite. It was like there was sometimes it was like it was like um, rather than take me all out. If they had to do a simple reset, I could just I had this thing in between my legs called the saddle. Which, which also helped keep his shape. But then I could also just squat down because I learned early on that like, if he squatted down, it looked better than mm. kneeling. Because suddenly when there's like one shot where I kneeled down, and suddenly it looked like a guy in a bear suit. So we never did that. And I would tell the, the guys doing the, uh, the live tour and also in Disney World, like, don't ever kneel. Like, he squats. Like, sit on your saddle. So I would like sit on the saddle and I would just like pull my arm out and I would just like, just very like, just kind of like just be in there in my little office and just like, just kind of like meditate or just like roll my eyes going like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <sighs> so I actually enjoyed those yeah. moments. I could just be alone and just like collect my thoughts. Because the other thing was I didn't have room to memorize lines. So this way I could just chill for a moment. And I use your phrase, Marty, like garbage memory. Mm. Like for each scene, I would just like memorize what I need to know for that particular scene. And then, like Dumbledore and the Pensy, of just like take it out and just throw it away, <laughs> and move on to the I next one. I would sometimes, or I am sometimes, not lonely. Maybe that's not the right thing to say, but you know, I'm inside the bird waiting, and I can just hear all my friends right. outside laughing and having a great time, and and I'm like, I want to. Be, I want to talk and have fun with you just <laughs> while we're waiting to go like, too. What are you doing? What are you saying? <laughs> but no one can hear me, so it doesn't help to do anything. You're mad screaming. <laughs> How about you, Marty? Do you ever kind of feel that, or do you have any kind of? No, I, no, I, I, I like the downtime in there. Mm. I like the, I like the darkness. I like the relative quiet, and I know that you know that they can hear me when they need to hear me. But I try to mostly just talk as snuffy when I'm talking. Um, but the uh, you know, like uh, Barkley, Barkley, the dog had this this fan, you know, this electric fan, which was really loud, and and you know, and it moved mm. the air very efficiently. And they offered that to me very early on. And after using it once, I said no, not never again, because I needed to hear the room. Ah. I needed to hear what people mm. were talking about, you know, to hear what my friends were joking about, to feel a part of it, to hear what the director was saying, mm -hmm. to, you know, to get the feel of the whole room, even though they didn't know that I was eavesdropping on everything that they, that they were saying. <laughs> um, but that's why I, I went with the, the fans, the actually, you know, the right. fans that, that yeah. moved me, uh, quietly so that I could uh, still be a part of the room and hear everything that uh, was going on yeah. uh, and then take it into account. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but conversely, uh, no, I, I like working hot. I, I, I prefer to work actually in a full sweat uh, as, mm -hmm. as long as when I, when I reach my full sweat, I have to maintain it. You know, if you, if you come in and out, I would, right. then, yeah. I would bundle up mm -hmm. to stay hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, that way I'm much less likely to pull a muscle. It's the it's the hot cold hot yeah. cold thing that that'll, that'll get, get you. you. Well, yeah. As we wrap things up, is there anything that we didn't cover about a puppet that you wear? Anything that you feel we haven't? Uh, we did kind of touched a little bit on how, like, I think Ma Noel, you and Marty memorize your lines. I generally don't. I, ha I have room inside and a light inside. And um, I, st I still kind of, I take a very tiny script because I can still 
read small <laughs> print. <laughs> so I take a very <laughs> tiny Maybe. 10. Relish that I know, moment. I know. <laughs> An eight point script right now that's like at eight point on it. So I can still read that. Um, uh, so that's like that kind of thing. We're all looking at monitors. Um, yeah. But for, for, telly, learned... for telly, yeah. I actually, I actually uh, blow up my scripts to 120%. Oh, you do? So yeah, you can see them because yeah. so they're the so font. far away. Is that why? Because the uh, I, I have I have super special glasses that are that are designed to 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 only see the distance of a monitor, and I blow up my script 120. Wow. percent uh, That's that's how I get by my my failing eyesight. Um, but I could never see if if I were to wow. look away from the monitor for an instant inside Snuffy, I would trample some poor child. Yeah. Yes, that was one of the jokes I came up with when I was wrangling was. What do you find between Big Bird and Snuffy's toes? Slow moving children. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're going to end today's. <laughs> Please, no. All right. No, I'll, I'll ask you one more thing. What is probably, uh, first of all, thank you both for spending so much time uh, talking about this. I, I love talking about this kind of thing and hearing your memories of it and and then coming up remembering things that i've long forgotten about it's so much fun i love no, this, i love this doing all that. just a joy it's so much fun oh yeah um and right. speaking of because no one else understands i know nobody, <laughs> nobody <else. laughs> um maybe the last question what is maybe the biggest joy of getting to perform that character of getting to perform bear of getting to perform snuffy and then i'll try to think of something for big bird the biggest joy the best the best thing about it it doesn't have to be i mean you can have 10 best things but just throw out one yeah um i think it's it's really that that satisfaction that that they believe like they actually believe of this character like not just kids but like grown people will just actually believe that this 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 walking talking bear is like exists yeah. and just they just go with it and it's it's gratifying yeah. to say it was like i remember i did like um the white house easter egg roll one year and this little girl uh, who was from who was from kent mm. <laughs> from from england and uh we were talking with her and uh bear gave him a, gave her a hug and i said oh it's a great hug you must be part bear and the little girl said you're so smart. You must be part human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And inside, I was like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, the whole believability of it and just, like, being that character. It came when going to, like, children's hospitals because that moment when Bear could go into a room. It wasn't a doctor. It wasn't a nurse. It was this friend. And their child was suddenly not a patient anymore, but their kid. And it was just that that gratifying moment of, like, this big burly character actually walking walking out of the TV and right there in front of you. It's yeah. like, yeah. So it's like the believability that he's there, you know, that this actually can exist. Marty, what about you? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's you know, that's absolutely the you know the, the key to it is uh, mm -hmm. you know, and then the fact that they're 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 there and they're real and there's uh, there's no uh, there's no question that they're just there on their own. I, I love that so much. Um, you know, when I, th when I think of the greatest joy about being in Snuffy, it's, 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 it's his relationship with Bird. Uh, when I th think of what gives Snuffy the greatest joy, it's, you know, it, it's, it's how much I love Carol Spinney. And uh, and how much Snuffy loved Bird, and uh, and you know and and how special that relationship was, and you know has you know has has a bird ever been loved that much by a by a Snuffleupagus? <laughs> it, it it has never you know it never has never never will be you know a, a, a relationship like that, and I feel that way working with you, Matthew. When when uh, when you're inside Bird, I you know I I Martin Robinson love you Matthew Vogel uh, and and Noel as well, um, but Snuffy loves Bird so much. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's always 
uh, a bit of a shock to me how much <laughs> he loved bird and and uh and you know and when he sees him his heart just aches with with the you know the longing of being separated from his best friend um and that you know and the joy of being of basking in the love mm -hmm. of you know of of his life in a in a way so uh being able to experience that vicariously through snuff is a very 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 sweet very powerful thing yeah and i can absolutely feel that inside bird whenever snuffy's around i feel that love absolutely without question and these are both too, too great those answers are so great i don't even I think I should. I don't even need to answer <laughs> anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, I think one of the great joys about performing Big Bird to me is, is the desire and the, the feeling I get when I feel like I am honoring Carol's intentions with the character. I absolutely love, it is, you're absolutely right, Noel, that, that, when somebody recognizes and believes in these characters, that is, it's, there's nothing better than that. And the feeling of love that these two characters have, and, and you even mentioned it, Marty, the, 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 the love that you had for Carol. And I think like the joy for me about Big Bird is that feeling of honoring Carol and being able to do that um, and keep his memory and keep his intentions alive through this character and i'm so lucky and grateful that i get to do it with two wonderful people like you and that's uh that's all i have to say <laughs> uh, that's it and and, and 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 for me there's you know there's there is a part of jerry nelson that's mm. always with me inside inside yeah Snow. i would say that i mean i've been doing it for you know a long you know long time but he's always there. He's always there with me, and uh, and and uh, whenever I'm, you know, lost or at, or at, at any loss at all, he's you know he's he's right there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We've been very fortunate, the three of us, to have known these incredible like icons of Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Jim Anson, Frank Oz, mm. Fran Brill, mm. Carol Spinney, yeah. <laughs> Louise you Gold. Know, uh, Louise Gold, like you know, Bill Baird, Peter Baird, like you know, all these these people before us. I mean, we've been we've truly been fortunate yeah. to have these people touch us, and now the the honor of like doing the same for this next That's generation right. of people coming <laughs> along. When these when these upstarts, these whippersnappers. Yeah. <laughs> when when you've been when you've been trained and mentored, you know, as as we have been by. You know, you you want to provide that for the next folks, and uh, you know, and and you know, Matt and I have have created this whole really workable, wonderful system at Sesame to you know to to pass on the knowledge and bring the new puppeteers along in a in a supportive, creative uh, way that uh, you know that uh, that allows them to be nothing but successful. Yeah. Yeah, right. and, and Noel, you've had yeah. that. You've gotten to work with some of them, direct some of them. I mean, they're they're all yeah. fantastic, except for Bradley Freeman Jr. God, you with Thank you, thank you both for uh, for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> literally anytime. No problem. Thank you for listening and watching. <laughs> Below the Frame is a Welcome Matt production produced by me, Matt Vogel. The theme song was written by Stephanie DeBruzzo and myself and performed by my band, The Mighty Weaklings. Thanks to Dave Holtine at DaveHoltineDesign.com. He created our podcast art. You can follow me on Instagram at WelcomeMattV or search Matt Vogel. I post things every now and again, and it'll help you know when new episodes of this podcast, for example, are coming out. If you are sharing podcasts, please let somebody know about this one. And also, if you have a few seconds, just rate and review this one. I'm sure that that pleases the podcast gods or something. You can find Below the Frame wherever you get your podcasts. And we are now a video podcast on YouTube, so you can see our faces if that's something that you want to do. Thanks, everybody out there for listening. I am Matt Vogel. And we will see you next time when we go below the frame. Go, go, go.